Welcome to the Jeff Crilly Show. So excited for uh, my next guest is uh, is Howard Berg, and he is the world's fastest speed reader. And I have to tell a story about about meeting Howard because I used to be on Channel Four here, and uh, in the late '90s, I had a segment called uh, Really Crilly, and I did feature stories. And Howard is one of the gentlemen that I interviewed along the way. And I remember uh, you were out at the ballpark at Arlington, and, and your speed reading books, and and I think it's just fascinating. So so I'm gonna uh, at least would you demonstrate. Sure. How, how you read a book. Sure. That's my free publicity book. Let me kind of move the pages a little so it's easier. Okay. First, thinking everyone will help you write the book. There's a lot of books on PR, but this is different because you're a reporter, so you know the inside story of how to do it. There's only, some people say there's no such thing as a bad story, only bad reporters, and then you're talking about how stories start. You start with Adam and Eve, that was the first story. <laughs> <laughs> there's too many reporters, but it's been real reported, <laughs> nevertheless. This is fascinating. About this about is about amazing. Turkey. This is absolutely. Turkey, <laughs> and, 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 and then you're showing how to do a release right here. That's beautiful. And okay, so Howard, you don't have to read the rest of the book. So, um, <laughs> Oh my goodness! Okay, so you were telling me a story right before we went we went live uh, about how you you found this gift and even the teachers didn't understand it. No, I was reading a book. I remember it was uh, eighth grade, and the teacher said, you know, read read. It was actually the Call of the Wild, you know, that that story about yeah. the wolf and, yeah. the, and, the, yeah. and the snow, and I read it in like three minutes. And she says, I told you to read it. I said, I did. She says. You could have read it. Read it again. I, I, I read it again. <laughs> she kept yelling at me, read it again. I kept read, It took me like 90 seconds. I was reading it. And she wouldn't believe that I'd read it because she, she was trying to kill time for 40 minutes and it took 90 seconds. And she was kind of angry at me because I wasn't... Did, now, this must have helped you during school, huh? It helped me in college. My last year at college, I did a four-year psych program in one year. Oh, my goodness. I took six science courses at the same time, 18 credits of science, two four-hour labs, and I had three part-time jobs. So I was working 18 hours a week. My lab reports took 16 hours, so it was 40 hours of lab and lab report, plus six, 18 credits of science and 18 hours of work. I don't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I really wasn't in good position at the end of that year, but I did a four-year program in a year, and I took the GRE, which is the graduate course right. in bio, and in three nights I read 48 books like biochemistry, cell physiology, Genetics. I got three questions wrong, so I was in the 99th percentile in the world. Unbelievable. Okay, tell, tell us about the uh, Guinness B Book of World Records. Uh, what kind of tests did you have to go through? Did they document it? How did you get the record? You submit the proof. So most of the records have one newspaper article or one television show. I had ten. I was in five cities where they tested me in a newspaper and five where they tested me on TV. In fact, I remember one was the National Enquirer. You know, a lot laugh. They had me read the pu unpublished issue that was going to press. They knew I hadn't read it. Right. I read the entire issue in three minutes. And then they had a reporter do it, and it took him three hours. And then they tested me from nine in the morning till five in the afternoon. I didn't expect that Right. on, the, on what I read. And I got like an, an A plus on the main points and a B minus on the details. But I read it in three minutes. Wow. Okay, so I'm trying to imagine how you do what you do. Uh, if if I started to speed read a book, am I just looking for verbs? Am I looking for, for Oh, do better. Nouns? Show you how to do it. Show me how to do it. Okay. Take your hand. First, for people watching, go to the first chapter, read it the way you normally do with a timer. Right. At the end of the minute, get a pen, pencil, mark off where you went. That's how far you read now. Go to the second chapter. Let me move this out of the way sure. so you can see. Sure. Take your hand, go one line at a time across with your eye following your hand. The secret is as fast as you can comprehend. So as long as you know what you're reading, go quicker till you don't. And that's where it got too fast. Wow. Slow down just enough. Your comprehension comes back for five minutes, one line at a time, left to right, left to right, as fast as you understand. Go back to where you tested yourself for the minute, do it a second time, with your hand, and you'll go 20 to 40% further. No Just kidding. Just doing that one no thing. No kidding. That so one thing. If there are parents watching this who say, I, I, I want my child to do better in school, does does this help them do better, be I'll better in school? Better. I'll tell you how it helped. Yeah. One of my students passed the bar at 19 in California, Micah Stanley. 
Um, Justin Brummett was a C student at 11, a college English professor at Tarrant College at 22. Wow. Uh, trying to Brad Voler did four-year college in six months and became a missionary, learned Chinese in three weeks. And then we had another student who was special ed. Amy, I won't give her last name. Sure. She had third grade reading in the ninth grade, went into my program. We got done with her. She had a two-year degree with a 4.0. When the kids in high school, in special ed she went with, got high school degree. She already had two years of college with an A. Went to Baylor on a full scholarship. Wow. Got a master's degree at 22. The school was teaching her, say, welcome to Walmart. And this is how you tie a shoe. We had her in a master's program at 22. It's not rocket science. We don't teach learning in school. Yes, yes. Of course they don't know how to learn. You never told them how it works. So of course they can't do it. So one of my favorite moments was uh, when the health care bill was passed. And, and you were actually on Fox Cavuto, News. Cavuto. Yeah. All right, tell us that story. There were three bills. The first bill, I think, was the Senate bill. It was 1,500 pages. The House bill was 2,000 pages. The final combined bill was 26. So the... 1,500-page bill took 50 minutes to read live. The second bill was 2,000 pages. It took 58 minutes. The third bill took 90 minutes, but it was 2,600 pages. And I did an analysis, and everything I predicted happened. Wow. Okay, so we want to put up a website for you. If, if somebody wants to learn the speed reading piece, uh, what website do they go to? Go to berglearning.com, and I'll give a coupon. I didn't okay. make it yet, yep, but yep. I will. Go to krilly 10 Krilly 10. I'll okay. give you 10% off. Right. <laughs> and here's another thing. If there you don't you learn it, get in touch with the people. If they can't help you, I will personally help you. I'm a Rotarian. If I can't get you to read faster with good understanding, I'll give you your money back. Because you shouldn't pay for something you didn't get. There you go. There you go. I love it. I want to introduce our, our uh, dynamic uh, producer, Matt Stoker. Matt, say hi. Yes, very dynamic. Hey, Happy so, to be so, here. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> Matt, what kind, of, what kind of student were you in school? Were you a straight-A guy? Or? I was. Well, I would say I was a straight-A student, but I didn't always. My hard part was, uh, was turning in the work on time. So I was really good at tests. I, I really liked the material, but I would always... You know, if there was a big project that had to be done, I'd always wait too long to get it done. Uh, or if there was a big paper that needed to be written, I'd always wait too long to write it. So that was my kind of student. So any, any, you know, I was top 10%, all of that, but anything that I failed on was just because I, I just didn't ever want to turn stuff in for whatever reason. All right, and I know you're, you're thinking of questions for Howard. What would you like to ask Howard? I want to know, um, is is it possible for you to slow down and enjoy reading? Like, can you kick back on a Sunday afternoon and enjoy a work of fiction? Or are you always on? Are you always, like, i got to speed read through this thing. Or can you just relax, glass of lemonade, sit out in the backyard and read a book? I'll do better than that. I'll show you how to do it. <laughs> that, I know that, how to do that. <laughs> better, than, better than saying I can do it, I'll show you how it works. You've ever read a novel and it got so boring, it's like, I can't finish it? I was, I was reading The Mists of Avalon. It's about the Knights of the Round Table. Mm -hmm. And there was 10 pages on the furniture. Every motif on every spoon, every napkin, every plate. I didn't care about the motifs on the plate, so I went through that in 10 seconds. It was done. So you skip the parts that you're bored with. Don't you, skip them. Well, you speed them speed, up. You speed through the parts that you're, that you're bored and with. And you're going so fast, there's no emotion. Okay. Yes. And then the parts that you want to savor, you have more time. You've sped through the boring parts. You can slow down. You don't go to the Louvre on a skateboard and look at the Mona Lisa. You don't chug Don Perignon. And you don't <laughs> read a Shakespearean sonnet in three seconds and weep over the beauty of the language. It needs to be savored and reacted to, and you have to feel it. And good fiction requires emoting. Wow. And so you speed through the parts that the only thing you'd feel is bored. I love it. And then, but you know what's happening. You just don't feel the boredom. Yes. And then yes. you slow it down and you savor like a fine wine, like the Mona Lisa, the parts that would give you great pleasure. You still finish quicker overall, but you don't lose any of the enjoyment. In fact, you'll finish more novels because the boring parts won't impede you. Wow, that's beautiful. You also have um, a program coming up that you want to talk about. Yes, please. I was training U.S. Special Forces at Fort Bragg a few months ago. It was a big honor. 
and they told me a horrible story. The wounded warriors, the young men that have been injured fighting for us, they have a suicide rate of one to three people a day killing themselves. Wow. I said, oh my God, why are they killing themselves? They can't find jobs. They're injured, they have PSTD, they can't find jobs. I said, let me help. I said, I'll teach, I could teach them to learn in a few hours time, 100% faster, so they can use the GI Bill and go back to work. Wonderful. They said, well, they have no money. I said, I don't care, I'll do it anyway. In fact, the Rotary Club, you're in a Rotary too. Yeah, yeah. Our district is about helping vets this year and I'm in the E-Club. So I said, I'll do it through the Rotary as a volunteer. So I set up a website just for the wounded warriors. Please don't enroll if you're not. I want them to have these seats. They deserve it. And it's howardwarrior.com. It's a four-hour live training on my webinar system, and I'm doing it for them. And if I get more than 500 people, and I might, I'm going to do an overflow into a replay until every one of the wounded warriors who needed this and wanted it is helped. Wow. I think that is absolutely beautiful. We need to. My dad had PSTD. He was on Normandy Beach wow. as a sailor. His boat blew up. It hit a mine. He wasn't supposed to be on the beach. He was supposed to let the soldiers go and go back to England, get more soldiers. He didn't have a gun. He was never supposed to be there. So he's running on the beach. The soldiers, he said, what do I do? He says, you got a sailor uniform. Get on another boat. So him and four guys, and there's all dead things all over right, the beach. Right run to the boat, two of them died going to the boat out of wow. the four. Wow. And it affected him. He was 18 years old. He was a kid. Yes. And I think about that, and then I saw these young people, and I understand from having had a dad with this how important it is for us to help these people. You know, they've given their lives to their country, and the country isn't helping them. Yes. So this is something I can do. So that's why I do it. All right, that is absolutely beautiful. We're, we're almost out of time for this segment, so I'll, I'll leave you with a final thought. What do, what do you want to leave the audience with? I'm a grandparent. If you watch the news, do you think there's too many smart people making too many good decisions in the world? I'm not pointing any fingers at any one person. Sure. I haven't heard that from anyone, conservative or liberal. And my job is to double the rate at which people learn so they make better choices, better decisions. I sold the Green Berets. People won't blow themselves up if they have education, have a good job, have a family, have a home. Those aren't people going to strap on a bomb. You get them when they don't learn. I, my job is to make your job easier, have less people you have to shoot and take care of. And I'm trying to find solutions to problems like global warming and energy I can't find the answers, but I can help people who can learn more, connect more dots, and find the answers for us. So that's my job. It's to help make a better world through better understanding, more information, and fewer mistakes. And no one can argue that that isn't needed right now, desperately. We're in big trouble as a planet and as a society. We need thinkers who actually know what they're talking about. And I feel it's my duty as a citizen of the world, to, to provide that. I love it. What a, what a great mission and ministry, and uh, speed yeah. readers are leaders. I'm a direct descendant <laughs> of Moses' brother Aaron in the Bible. Is that I'm right? Actually, I'm a high priest. If there was an inner temple with the Torah, I would, be allow I, would have, I would have been allowed in. You know you are when you're born, because it's from father to son. So I'm actually, when I watch the Ten Commandments, I'm like, that's my uncle. And the guy making the golden calf, that was my grandfather. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> it's kind of changed the story a little. <laughs> You're an inspiration. Thank you so much for being on the show. You'll have to come back again. I love this. I, I, I appreciate you having me. Absolutely. All right. Well, that's it for this time, and we'll see you next time.